Hello guys, we're back onto the show. It's map two between Envious and Dignitas. Dignitas sort of stole it away on Dust 2. The second half was very strong. Now we move into Mirage and Yanko is, is tri-casting with us. So yesterday he had his uh, inaugural cast with, what, just, well, first cast ever, yeah. And now it's uh, first tri-cast ever. So what do you think, James? How's he doing? Is he good? Is he bad? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Two thumbs up. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you said thumbs up, thumbs down. I gave you thumbs up. What do you yeah. want? This is, this is my thumbs up. Right. Where's your thumbs up? I Let's just, see yours. I and you, you, you mock mine and that's yours. Yeah. Like what I copied you. It's one of the... No, 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 no. Mine, 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 was, mine was confident. Mine, mine had belief. Yours was like, hey guys. <laughs> it's like, hello, I'm here, to the, I'm here for the party. I brought my camper. It's got some cheese in it. <laughs> Yes, I'm. But you love, you I know. Yeah. I was gonna say you love cheese. I know, but I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like cheese. I see you'd be like, hello guys, I've got this cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just what the, that's my read. My read. That's a pretty lame party. I would bring beer, and whiskey. I bring cocktail sticks, Dan. Thank you. No, you're not, you're not Dan. You're Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely apologize. We, we are pretty similar, you know, both ripped. Not, not really, no. Well, why is the camera on? Okay, it's not. Ca I'm, I'm so confused right now. We need to go for the game. All over the place. We're in a game where life is simple. I called Yanko Dan with. and I thought I was Yanko. <laughs> you thought you were Yanko. You assumed his identity. I'm definitely not. I tried to be Yanko. You know, went to Serbia, drank some rakia. Definitely wasn't like Yanko Yanko. Be a rush. That's a nice question here, Yanko. I'll continue though. Um, Envy are going to kill Cage with me. <laughs> They've got five plays of Kevlar and they're killing more people, Dan. Over to you, Dan. Well, here they go. Here they go. Bomb has been planted. And got, ooh, nice little frag coming in from apartments already. And mm. things looking tough here for Dignitas to get in, but they've done more from worse positions on the last map, and they are doing very well here. Three kills in a row, just leaving happy now, as so often is the case. And just tapping away, patience. But there's a defuse going on, so happy's got to got to get his skates on here. Defuse comes in. Oh, that's so close. One second left. And maybe Happy's actually pulled this one off. I don't think there's a kid anywhere. Oh my god, what what is this? What a Yanko! What is going on? EV, Yanko. EV plays. Why, why are you asking me then? Why am I supposed to talk about what happened? Hey, this is what we do to threat. I have no explanation we, for this. We'll be like, okay, threat, there's three kits on the CT side. Why do you think what are the merits of three kits? And then it's be, it'd be like, uh, uh, I, was, <laughs> I, was exploding. To, I was going to say that Sean Gares made a video about pistol rounds and showed how they have five calories and that's all nice. They get control of the bomb site, but they don't have anything to combat the retake. But then still happy, just manages to get and kill the diffuser with his teammate that was supposed to cover him. So sometimes CS is pretty unexplicable then. And we just won the round. I'd say don't blame CS, blame the human beings, blame CS. It's human error. Is this another one of your existential crises, Dan? You cannot trust your fellow man, but that, you can trust the yes. game. Well, yeah. Why not? That makes sense. That's lo that sounds logical. It actually does make some sense. How about you, James? I'm, no, I'm just going to leave well, it to you guys. I'm good. You're just going to sit there, are you? Yeah. How's, how's it going? stretching so my knee right now. How's, how's it going? Is it good? Well, let's see how it goes for Config. He's in a good position here. Rubino is actually going to pick up an AK there in Palace. And you can see that this is really smart from Envious. They changed their plan immediately. Some teams would actually try to force the issue there and not adapt to the situation. Well, they but do immediately, have happy to kitchen, though. That's also a very, very good point. That helps them a lot to make this decision. But Indeed yeah, it does. I mean, that pistol round, it just shows again. I'm not sure if Dignitas had a kit. But if they had, the players obviously couldn't pick it up just far away because they could have just faked the fuse then and baited happy. They knew where he was. <clears throat> it was not to be and they lose the all-important pistol round, but they save an AK in this round and still have three deagles. So, and we are not out, out of the woods just yet. Have you ever been in, in the woods, Dan? I mean, Yanko. James, what kind of question is that I was raised in the woods? Well, it's good to know, Yanko, not Dan. Got it right this time. You can just, just call I'm, people Dan and not Dan. That's just, not Dan, just, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> hey, not Dan. <laughs> Tell me about this. Have you ever been in the woods, James? I've been in the woods, yeah. I have. What did you do in the woods? Walked through the woods, Dan. 
I had a I had a picnic on top of a mountain. And I walked through some woods on the way there. With some cheese, of course. There was cheese, there was some pate, there was some bread, obviously. It was in France, of course. <laughs> and it was a baguette, in fact. It was a baguette. Speaking of, about baguettes, and yes. There is a snake of CT players moving towards the B bomb site. What is going on right now? Snakes and baguettes. I'm completely lost. I thought, thought this was Counter Strike. <laughs> What's going on? All right, so it is uh, going to be interesting because they're going to go into. Potentially move into the stack here for the information play with MBK. Is he going to actually check that? He has only got a P250, so he'd be one of the ideal players to kind of sack himself for info. And uh, again, as mentioned, it's really nice that Dealing Tats were able to save a lot of what they purchased in the previous uh, save round. So, in, in, also including the AK that Ruben had picked up in Palace that he still has. So, considering what they have, the CT side, I think this buy might be a bit scary for Envy on the, in the fact that two of their players have only got pistols. I'm a little bit worried and they do appear to be moving into the stack then. And uh, I mean, this, this could get pretty difficult. They still have a minute on the clock and Dignitas aren't really revealing their ultimate evil plan just yet. Although you see some movement now and it is Happy who's close with the match then. And he needs to be. So far so good, Rubino goes down, that's the AK taken care of. And now we see the Dignitas players getting cleared out. Had a player on the boost position. No kills yet for the Dignitas side. It will be a clean sheet after all for Envy. Yeah, that was not what I expected when uh, Envy has decided to go B. It seemed like Dignitas had uh, the perfect read and, and had some good good bait setups as well, but not able to, to hit the shots and get the kills and uh, pretty clean round for Envy. And we see MSL actually on the off and not Cajun, so they're deciding to stick to their uh, guns, so to speak, for now. <clears throat> He's going for an aggro uh, play towards the A-apps. Well, MSL hasn't spotted, any, spotted anything just yet, but it looks like he's got a feeling. A clue, perhaps. He's got a clue, but maybe not. He's going to toss the smoke down and uh, give up the, the aggression, the forward position, and Happy will go unknown in that spot. And it looks like MBK is going to win the one versus one here in B-apps, so... Early round advantage for the envious side. Now, what is the best way for them to play this situation? Now, it looks like they want to go for a take in the middle now. Oh, lining up a bit there, and Kenny S yes, is actually going to take down a devil, and that is not a good. That's not a good sign for envious. Although it does still move to four versus four, so they're still in a good a position. And so, very key frag for him to make here. If he's able to get a quick one. Oh, this is very dangerous. He's got no Kevlar, 2 HP, MSL barely escaping with his life. And considering he has the AWP as well, very important for him to live for his team to have any success. But now, perhaps a fast play towards the B side is more control that's gained by Envious. There's still potential for the split to be successful here. Caitlin B is stuck between a rock and a Kenny S, and it will be Kenny S to take him down through said rock. So only MSL and Rubino remain. MSL down to 2 HP, so. Uh, there are decisions to be made here by Dignitas, and indeed, Rubino is moving his way into T-Spawn, and now uh, MSO will make a run for it as well. So Envy will move to four, surviving with three plays in this particular round. Yeah, just getting picked off mostly in this round, especially Config dying uh, without any contact contest, and seeing as... You know, I mean, it is a, it was an okay buy for Dignitas, but at that point, they, it was hard for them to react somewhere else. Uh, and Rias had a, a good call to went for a, to go for a B split, and uh, Dignitas could only save at that point. So it's going to be interesting to see if they decide to buy up after this round or just uh, get some pistols and uh, focus on the next round. We'll see what Dignitas can do with what they have in the hole. MSL, where is he? Okay, here we go. He's going into the window, one would presume. But no early engagement here, so Envy putting a lurker into Palace, like Taz used to do for uh, the Palestine versus Pro. I don't see him there to walk in at the moment. It doesn't work out for MSL in the mid area. So uh, Config's got a scout, but other than that, 
not much doing here for Dino Tafrabino. It is still in play with DM4 and full Kevlar. I'm not sure if he was seen there. It seems that he was, and he can do nothing about this. KGB gets a uh, consolation frag. That said, it is a 2 versus 3 now, so there is potential config. Upgrades his scout for an AWP, and the bomb's being planted for him, but he doesn't check the angle in time. Yeah, he's going to go down as well. And uh, looks like the round is pretty much over here for the envious side. But so Yanko, what do you think about MSL's individual play there? Because he had he had two choices after seeing nothing in the middle. Either go for information and commit himself and obviously be in the position where he's going to be against opponents potentially and die maybe, be, or be out of position, versus playing more defensively and having less information but definitely not dying. Well, considering they only had two guns, I, he felt that he has to make a play and I mean, the problem was he didn't hit his shot. He yeah. had the advantage there. He was uh, holding the, the, the right angle. If he hits uh, those two shots, uh, it might have been a whole different story in this round. But uh, he doesn't, and uh, Dinitas lose yet another round. 5-0 down now. And still uh, MSL with the off and Cajun on the M4. Yeah, that's one of those positions where if, you've got a, if you have a simple on your team, it's like, here, simple, have this up. He can, he can win rounds like this uh, for you, but uh, MSL is not necessarily known for super, super high skill ceiling, but uh, his merits are uh, quite humongous in other, other regions, such as leading, leading his team. We will see that on the second half, I'm sure of it, in particular. And, but for now, they are stuck on the defense, on the CT side, and there's like an A set piece coming in here from Envious. Yeah, well, the top mid play is not working out for them. Tensky coming in with two huge frags, and Envy is still stuck in the choke point here towards Tetris, making their way through. NB NBK coming in from the back, and that flashbang's going to be perfectly timed. So he'll get a flag and make his way all the way back. CT, though, is still in control of conflict, so this crossfire is working out slowly, but surely for the CTs until that two man spray down comes in from Apex. And the third kill, Apex causes absolute savagery in this round, looking so good for Dignitas, and he just got torn apart at the end. The flashbangs were perfect almost every time. Yeah, and they also had a good reaction trying to be more aggressive towards uh, mid. They were in a 5v3 basically, got two free kills uh, from Tensky, but then uh, maybe a bit too aggressive uh, in their play and that great timing from Apex with that uh, flash just uh, cleans up the round in the end. You need to play more passively after you get those two initial kills, right? Not allow for something like that to happen, because obviously the T's need to, to make an aggressive play, and that's the most common one. Flashing yourself in the smoke on, on stairs, pushing there or pushing CT spawn, but they were too far away for that. So Dignitas should have expected that and played it uh, more passively, and, and they would have had probably a, a perfect round if they had. Yeah, instead of making their life easy, though, Things get a little bit more difficult as they are down to Nico if they lose this round. That's a great entry once again from Apex. Apex is really shining so far in this first half of the second map. And it's always scary when Apex is on. Kenny S as well, been pretty decent so far in this series. He'll be opening things up as well. So already losing two players, maybe Dimtas are even starting to think about like stacking a site now and saving if the T's don't go there because that's going to happen. and. There's no chance really for them to get back into this round realistically. The, uh, the argument to save is, is very high. But it looks like we're going to get Cajun B just running in. And that seems a little bit odd. Yeah, they just got picked apart yet again. And Config uh, not uh, having a single kill. I think his mission is now not to be James Bond. Good luck with that. Oh, well, there we go. Nice, almost getting two. Saves it last minute. <clears throat> yeah, this was a pretty big buy for Dignitas. In my opinion, it, it's still not at that point where they have to force every round. I, I would have preferred if they went for a for an eco or, or some, or maybe for a, go for a full eco there. And then if you lose the next gun round, you will still have a, a good buy in, in the following round, right? Because you will have some money in the bank. But now they go for the pistols and it's probably going to be 8-0 for Envious. And uh, Dignitas will have to try and salvage, salvage this half somehow. Indeed. Yeah, it's going to be a tough ask. Envious uh, steamrolling them so far, having, really having their number on the T side. I mean, again, Dignitas is known for their T side strength. But, it, I mean, the whole point is... You need is, some CTs. Exactly. You need it. something to work with, right? Exactly. I, I, would, I would like to, for Dignitas to maybe have an op towards B, maybe even go for double op or open B and uh, an, an auto sniper on A, and then have three rifles aggressively on mid, 
flashing uh, mid and, and fighting for that mid control basically early on. Be a bit more aggressive in their play and then play for the bomb site. Well, B site's been cleared out here by the T's. Tensely though, he's got a flash coming in from a teammate from the A site over Connector and Apex will get taken down towards top mid. So it's a three versus three and uh, you can see Rubino's got an AK. We'll see what Apex had once uh, the players get top mid. They haven't chosen to retrieve it if he did have a weapon. So we've got two players on short now, including the AWP onto Rubino. He has Kevlar as well. Tensky coming in wide and Rubino's committed and he's unable to get anything done there. I think if Tensky goes down before Rubino commits and maybe he goes for the save instead. MSL trying to get some hot shots there, but uh, he will get nothing done either. So Envy surviving with three players once again. Money's not a concern for them at the moment, being 8-0. Dignitas at max loss bonus will uh, eke out two AWPs in this round. So Cajun B going to join the fray. We'll see what kind of difference this can make. There's almost $16,000 on Kenny S. That was pretty nice. He's only got four kills so far as well. Only died once. <laughs> okay. All right, we got the orphan mid there now on Demon Task. Again, in the cell. And KGB has picked up the orphans. We, I guess, we'll see him towards the shorts here. But the fast push in from Envia straight into the A bomb site could cause issue here for Demon Task. Then the cell is going to pick off Apex like a clay pigeon there. But the frags go straight back in favor of the French side envious. Now as Rubino is left to try to defend behind the smoke, it's gonna actually go a little bit too deep there. Rubino gets a couple uh, couple free engagements, only will take one frag out of it though, as envious try to take over CT spawn and MBK will be able to do that. So not much uh, for Cajun B to do here probably, unless he's able to get a CT frag from a peak. Wow, nice. great flick from Cajun B and that is happy dead. Config might actually have a chance to get in here now, not having to worry about the player behind him. In he goes though, two players with a crossfire. One is going to peek out blinder, it's MBK. That's going to allow Config to almost get two frags. Now KGB with a chance right now. Has to hit the shot, he's got no kit as well. This is a problem, gets the no scope, but where's the kit? There's no kit, James. And there's the, no chance. Yeah, the other player had the kit, he chose to push CT. It just didn't work out for them, and the score will be 9-0. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. It's also, you also had the two envious players in CT spawn when the bomb wasn't planted for that position, which was again uh, awkward, but uh, good read for them. Probably expected some shenanigans from Dignitas towards mid. Just uh, went for uh, a straight up, uh, basically a rush uh, through ramp, uh, managed to get entrance into the bomb site, and after that it, just, it was just up to them to play the after plant uh, situation accordingly, and now they go for a B rush. Well, there's a crossfire here for the CTs. KGB playing very strong position. Two kills for him. He's still got 12 bullets in the magazine. And while he just bides his time behind the wall there, his teammates will stream in to help him. And indeed, he will take down Kenya to make it a 3k. Happy to find himself a top mid miles away. He's going to run, James. W will be pressed, Dan. <laughs> He's just going to run all the way. W will be He's... pressed. Here we go. What a surprise. So far, so good. Can get himself another one versus one, but he won't win it. And it will be rescued for Dignitas. You know, a lot of people are talking about this swap and how maybe Astralis got the better of it. I think it's basically it will benefit both teams. Maybe it will take some time for Dignitas because of their structure. But Cajun B is an amazing player. He can be a superstar in, in any team. It felt like he was uncomfortable maybe in Astralis for some time. Didn't uh, give uh, the performances uh, he, uh, he could maybe and that we saw from him earlier so and i think he's showing it in in this match exactly what he's capable of especially on dust too yeah yeah i actually agree with you as well due to the fact that cajun b is going to be able to lend himself to the op more and that was something that was somewhat lacking in some regards for this team i mean okay you can see rubino opens and then the cell but you can see it's going quite well here so far for Dignitas in the early stages. Finally winning some of these opening battles, I mean, only in the cell down, but a one for two is certainly a good spot for the CTs to be in. You can see them playing quite passively on B and uh, as well on A, very far back positions. The bomb is dropped in mid and there you go, Cajun B is going to find himself just a sliver of NBK to click down with the AWP. Interesting position now here for Envious. They need a good, strong individual performance, but Happy can't get anything done. And Apex starts to realize that it's probably all over for him in this round. And there it is. In comes the peak and the flash. 
and that's the frag in the round. Okay. Dignitas stringing two together, that's good for them. Yeah, now it's a bit better from Dignitas actually being more aggressive towards that mid, mid area, not allowing uh, enemies to just get uh, control there, but still, <coughs> as you mentioned, their economy is really strong. They have another full buy even after losing two gun rounds in a row, so it's really gonna be difficult for Dignitas to to win the remaining round, which I feel they have to to have uh, something to work with in the second half. So NV going for a creep, a very different approach. And I'm really interested, this looks like it's going to be a war of attrition because the CTs are all playing close as well. So uh, who will this favor? We've got one CT behind the smoke, actually that might be a big play coming in later on as it develops. Indeed, Rubino will come in through the smoke, take down Happy and the bomb. That nade will hit Kenny and Apex. CT and Sandwich as well, uh, an oft-checked place for the T's. Kenny is alone. So a very fast round. Dignitas has surviving with both, both orbs intact as well, that's important. So despite being uh, at least 8-0 down, maybe 9-0 down, 9-6 is possible. I think this is just an example of how uh, a good read can win you the round. Dignitas had four players towards the A-bomb side, they were playing in these uh, close-up positions and what Envias did was uh, exactly what Dignitas expected them to do and they had the perfect counter for it and uh, they got uh, an easy round win and actually forced Envias to go for a quasi-buy with only pistols and armor. There you go, Cajun B gets to work with the AWP, falls back a little bit, has some cover. Great shot there from Cajun and he's been, he's definitely been connecting, looks very confident and I certainly agree that this could be end up being better for both teams. I'm quite excited to see developments for both teams and with the new players that they have picked up. And I mean, well, there's this, it, it feels like there's light at the end of the tunnel now for Dignitas. It feels like if they can pick up the next round, maybe the next two rounds, then they can actually have something to work with to get that T side going. And we know that it can be strong. So we might be in for a very close game if this keeps up. And uh, we'll see happy usual things there, just you know, moving into Palace. But otherwise, you know, very, very passive default here. Oh, wow, got to be careful. KGB almost hit that. Did he actually hit? No. I don't think he did, no. He almost got a 30 bomb on the previous map, actually, which I don't think we mentioned. KGB, so, yeah. I, I do think this is a, a good swap for both sides as well. MSL gets taken down. So uh, we'll see. KGB answers back pretty quickly, though, onto Apex. One for one, you can see Happy lurking over towards the Palace position and he's going to get a frag onto Tenski, but again, Cajun B is going to keep trading for his team, keeping them in this particular round. Bomb is in mid at present, in fact, all the T's are. But there's a bit of a gap. Yeah, yeah Although, the smoke Cajun. Indeed, if he peeks that, he's going, he's going to be completely exposed. It would be very unfavourable and he will think better of it. Bomb rotating towards the B bomb site now with NBK, cutting off... Um, I think he's smoked off connector there, which means he can move up short if he wants to. I think that might be his ultimate plan. He can choose to lurk and cut off any rotations, but also just go through the smoke and uh, try and flank the, the CTs. You can see Cajun B here's NBK jumping around though. So he's keeping these players entertained towards A while there's only one person at B. And Cajun will get the shot. Yes, he will. That's the third one for Cajun. What a round from him. Really lending strength to the CT side of Dignitas. And can he also get the bomb planted? The config is going to take them both out. And I'm starting to think now that, uh, you know, the Cajun B, if he's going to be able to have this degree of freedom with the AWP, maybe it'll change over time. But, but one of the things that the Dignitas always needed was better CT sides. And having someone that can be, a, you know, a high fragging author type style, it's something they've never really truly had, I don't think, um, in the last few months. So, I mean, Kirby is an amazing player, but he's, you don't really see him on the, on the orb. That's not really his style as much. Definitely not. The only thing with this trade is that Kirby has been playing out of his mind uh, recently and really had monster performances. If you talk about this trade six months ago, maybe, everyone would be saying that, you know, Dimitas got a way better deal. Right? But uh, recently, Kirby has been performing really well. But as I said, if you need <coughs> to swap Kirby, well, KGB is a pretty good, uh, yeah. pretty, pretty good swap. Although I think uh, he, he was in the shadow of many players on Astralis and I think, as you said, wasn't really spaced from to spread his wings and we're seeing that now. Early days though, and the push comes in the middle now from Envious, looking to get these, uh, these positive trades, but they are going to lose two players. Well, now everyone's trying to figure out what is the uh, 
What is a play here for the tease? And it seems to be a split towards the bomb side, but Cajun B has yet more to say about this. Almost giving Happy a bit of a haircut there. He's left with not much HP, but there's two to find. There's one. Kenyas going down. Happy last man standing. Doesn't opt to go for the wall bang there. That is a very penetrable wall. Four versus one. So not much Happy can do here. This is the last round of the first half, so he's got to go for it, and he is going to get wrecked. Really smart uh, dynamic play from Cajun B with the open in this map. Like he, he took a lot of aggressive decisions while still not taking them stupidly. Like not, not putting himself in spots where he had to go completely just out of his mind on the skill um, scale, but making smart choices, moving around a lot and showing his, his uh, dynamic ability with the open. That's, that, was, that was really nice to see. Definitely took some time for the Gintas to adapt and start winning rounds, but it was a, a good effort from them in the end. It's hard to uh, string six rounds in, in a row after being down 9-0. We saw that Envias had a great economy going for themselves, but it seems that they st stepped up a bit uh, individually as well, had a couple of good reads, and now with Pistol, this uh, still can be a, a close game. Yeah, Doing Touch just need to pick the right round and hit the headshots. There is no... Well, it's just Kevlar's. Only Kevlar's on Envias, so no kit, but they're going to go with three players towards B, so they're going to meet this head-on. Yeah, or speaking of heads, Dan, all I'm seeing is heads getting popped from both sides. Four kills, four headshots here, and we're seeing yet more. All headshots, Dan! There are two players left for both sides now. The CT's coming in from the shop area, and everything slows down. After a massive start there. Bit of a tag coming in on one of these players. Devil goes down as well. There's Apex versus two, and everyone's going to get shot in the face in this round. But the pistol will go to Dignitas. This is maybe the one problem I have. I was, I'm not sure who was the third player on B that was uh, be, uh, below the window, that was the Joker player, so I to think speak. it's happy. Yeah, and he d does this always. When, when they bait for him and he's on the porch as well, he always sticks with the USP, with the silencer. But you see there, if you miss the first shot or two, it's really hard to, to be efficient with it close range. That's why I always prefer that player has a 5.7 or a P250, P250 or a yeah. CC. But uh, it seems like the is off the attack here. But do they have the nades? Do they need the nades? It looks like they have the shots, and that will suffice in this situation. Although they're losing a couple players, it's down to a three versus one. And then DK actually finds himself a frag here with the armor that he has. And is there a weapon to be picked up there? I'm not sure if there was. I'm pretty sure I saw... I thought I saw an AK there. All right. Maybe I'm going crazy, I'm well, sure. Indeed. Dead now, of course. Round for Dignitas, but again, you see miscommunication there for, for Manvi. Uh, Devil just staying on, on top of balcony watching apps, but no one is watching Ram for him, and he just gets shot in the back like a noob Dan. <laughs> in the back, like a noob. Dan. 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 Well, again, we've got the snake moving into the B bomb site here with all the CTs. They're going to... See, that's smart. Most of the time, I always get tilted when I'm playing, like, a, a pug or something. Really and you don't, you don't break the window. Because you're like, we're not here. And the other guy's like, I'm going to break the window! Says Instant James, tilt. who tries to knife people in pistol rounds in 1v1s. See, I told you. I apologise, Yanko. All right, I said sorry already. He doesn't, he doesn't remember most of these situations as well. He often like, talks about knifing people. Then. And then I, I bring up the fact that he does these ridiculous situations like we're in a, in a, a match where we just win around. He's in a one versus one where guys defusing. He's like, I'm going to try a knife. This guy stands up, shoots him in the face. Oh, we go to overtime now, overtime now guys. That's, and it's MR5, let's go. Look, <laughs> let's just wanted go. to have some fun. I'm on the road, 16,000 stat track knife. Now goals. we're going to play MR5 6, 000, overtimes. Yeah. Don't you like MR5 overtime? I like it. Yeah, I guess that's the only reason why it's still in face. It's oh, the knife! No. There we go. That's Word. a value play. Word. That makes that actually makes sense, though, James. It's a value play. But you don't play for knives. Like knife opportunities present themselves. You, you try to force the knife opportunities. That's that's the problem I have with you <laughs> when in, when I'm playing with you. Like I, I yeah, because if you play with James, he's got knife setups. He's on every map. He's got numerous knife setups. While on the other hand, <laughs> Envious has a double op setup here with Kenny having 7k <laughs> after that knife kill. But Dignity is just going for a fast uh, A push with MSL taking mid control by himself. And you can see how he draw the attention of Devil. But is the timing going to be good? 
Ooh, Ooh. That's really, that's big. That's a bit unexpected, but Apex, as yeah. yet again, is causing problems here for Dignitas. Of course, currently tied 9 to 9, but Config, there's so much for him to do. The bomb is down in the middle of the site. Bomb is exposed like a. Like a I looked at Yanko and said that again. I, I, I apologize. I can only say sorry, Yanko. I can only say sorry so many times, James. But yeah, here it was interesting because Tignitas was off by maybe three or four seconds with their push. It's really hard to <coughs> hit the timing there. The idea was to draw the player who watches connector obviously towards mid so that the players are running out uh, towards the A-bombs. I only have to deal with, with one CT player and after that they can smoke off the others and uh, play the after plan. But they were a bit too late. Devil was already back into the A-bomb site. Even with that a great kill from Cajun on Kenny, uh, still wasn't enough. Yeah, Cajun with the first shot and the second, actually. And he's going to go down. Glocks. Pulling an MSL right there. Yeah. yeah he's gone down to Glocks. That is a big deal, but uh, with the AWP actually, well, finds his way to Cajun's hands. He's going to get try to get into a better position. So he's just sprint back through under pass. And, okay, he got pursued by Happy. That's actually very smart. He's not allowed Cajun to get out of that position. A better one, and uh, looks like only two frags are all amount there for Dignitas. So, in Dignitas... the pursuit of happiness, good movie, get it? Yeah, good but movie. happy was the pursuer. I know, the I know, but it's the best I could do. All right, please continue the that. That sucks. Wow, okay. Two round lead for Envy now. Both teams going to be back on the buy. Their double orbs continue here for Envy. No orbs on the Dignitas side as we're used to seeing on Mirage. Actually, uh, that is a question I would like to ask you, Yanko, a bit later on. MSL is going to be smoking off the CT side of Connector, the site side of Connector, actually. And he can pop flash his teammates in later. Conte going to take NVK down. So there's that pop flash I was talking about, but Devil is creeping around. And Kenny's in there to boot. Almost gets taken down by Devil, in fact. But he will indeed trade for Rubino. Three versus three. Interesting. Conte in a great position there. He will take a frag there with... His uh, awesome spot in window, but it's going to be Apex once again. So you call shenanigans and pick up the frag. He's got another one versus one, which he's going to win. Apex, great recoil control, as always. And in sneaks MSL. He finds himself a blind spot. Oh, no, he gets caught by Happy in the bag. That's unfortunate there. Good opportunity for MSL, but it uh, doesn't quite pan out in the end. So 12 to 9, Dignitas with poor money, and Envy is starting to build their bank. And it started off great for Dignitas. You can see how this is why they're good at Mirage. From that default mid control, they know the positions that the cities like to play. They, they uh, nade the player on cat, they flash the player in connector. They just didn't expect two cities to be in connector. And, and that was that kill from Devil is probably what uh, it was probably the most important one uh, in the round at that time. And uh, Dignitas again on Nico going towards the B bomb site. Indeed, they're going for a fast one, but they have uh, flashbangs unlike the eco we saw from Envy in the first half, and they will indeed get a bomb plant down as well as the entire site. So they've got all their players alive, and they take the first frag onto NBK. Kenyas can't even go for the repeak in this situation. He needs his teammates to come in and clear out the site. Happy with the orbs going to take down MSL. Kenyas gets taken down by Cajun B. So we're down to two versus two. These two Ts don't have any rifles there with these three kills that they've got. Happy coming in, and the clock is ticking. Both the CTs have Kevlar. Uh, sorry, have diffuse kits. Obviously, they've got, they've got Kevlar as well. Oh, Cajun B picked the Molotov. Can he get the GG Molotov down in time? Five second diffuse bouncing off the box. Has he got enough HP to hold on? I think, oh, the smoke saves him, but I don't think it was needed. Absolute mayhem there. Colossal damage done by Dignitas and the bomb plant to boot. And it all stems from a positional mistake from Envy as they had uh, app, uh, Happy with the AWP from Kitchen and MBK with only a pistol or all the way up Cat. Knowing that Dignitas was probably going to eco, you want to have a pistol there just in case uh, Dignitas decides to go for a B rush or a B execute and all, it almost cost him the round in the end. It cost them a, a couple of players and, and the bomb pad for Dignitas, so they're still in it. Seems like. There's, so this round is going to be restarted for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, who cares? We're going to restart it. Nothing's happened yet. so. Easy, easy, uh, easy something, easy rider. And we can Bill Collins. Have some replays <clears throat> to, uh, to fill the time. Do you like replays, James? I like replays. It reminds me of when I was, uh, I think it was DreamHack Winter 2013. That's another cheese story, isn't it? 
it's not a cheese story. When I was when I was okay. producing one of the Street Fighter streams, I did a sound, video, and replay operation all at the same time on my own Dan. It was beast. It was beast. That was one gangster production. No humble well, it, whatsoever. It was one gangster production indeed. <laughs> what are you implying there? Are you being racist then? What is this then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being racist, James. You're being racist. There's as a four round lead for James the most racist the person I know. Do you think, um, what was that match we saw of Dignitas on Mirage? Right. Where they had like a just insanely <sighs> dominant. It was the last performance. It was the last one we saw of them, but I don't recall who they I watched. Played. I watched the demos from the Dignitas point of view, from like every point of view on their T side, because I think they were like two oh, CC rounds. Oh, against Fnatic. It was against Fnatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fnatic, yeah. So I learned, I learned some, some things and bits and bobs from MSO, but, but now I know what he's doing when he stands behind boxes in mid. Yeah. I know what's about to go, what's about to go down. Yeah, they have they have really great dynamic rifle players. I say every time Dignitas play their T sides, especially on Mirage, it's usually the uh, the map where they're most comfortable to play that style. And, and I think it's something that, as you know, Yankee was talking about, it's pretty easy to just insert Cajun B into that because you just have to know you know where to be and when. And it's not so much about having loads of six setups with nades, no like super complicated mid rounds, early, early round decisions. So pretty simple but effective pace pacing from Dignitas is is. Uh, Quite effective, and we're going to see Dignitas trying to take middle, but they aren't able to move from top mid just yet. You can see MSL, I think that's the setup for the jungle smoke or outside of connector. Connector, yeah. Outside yeah. Of connector, yeah. So this is really nice to, to set up the take on connector, leave a player there. It comes pop flash. And then go back for the A play, perhaps. Boom. So they'll take connector for free, which means they can go for they can go for an A split, but they can also go for a B split. That smoke stops uh, the vision. Rubino's going for a cheeky walk through. Spots a CT as well. That is as cheeky as it comes. Three kills with only one answered for Envy. Happy and NBK wondering what on earth is going on. The bomb though is can just just escape the connector area. NBK very close, but uh, not going to make it quite. Wow, we have the plant for CT with nobody covering the angle. Happy misses the shot though. That could have been so different. I mean, that was a really brazen plant. I guess they were scared of Connector, but there was another smoke in there. So it was kind of safer to do that anyway. NBK versus two now. Both these players heavily tagged here on the T side. So it's doable for NBK, but MSL's gonna come in from the back no less and put a stop to things. What is that push from Rubino? That was so awesome. <laughs> That's what he literally walks through the smoke into a guy's face. It's like, hello, I'm gonna kill you now. <laughs> that was basically, that was it. Brilliant. That, um, was, that was a spot of madness, I, but not as mad as that bomb plant. That bomb plant was suicidal. I think he had a nade out in his hand as well, the guy on stairs or something like that. Anyway, didn't have to pick up a very much needed round. 13 to 10. So th there's actually an opportunity for them to do his, this here. We see uh, all the grenades for Envious, but a scout on MBK he is quite the scout aficionado, but will he be able to use it to good effect here? Because we have a set piece coming in, but there's two players playing close. There's a good anti set piece setup from the CTs, but they have to hit the shots. There's the first one from Apex and the second one as well. Oh, it's actually the fire from Happy. So everybody coming into play here now for Envious. Rotation in full effect, but Dignitas still need to burst through slope. How have they not pushed through slope? Problem is Dignitas can't really run away and reset the situation because the bomb is down. However, there is a smoke. There's actually a set smoke that you can do from the ramp, which uh, gives you certain gaps to look through and you can throw pop flashes towards the connector area as well. So I don't know if this is just a random smoke or the same one, because it lands in a similar spot. what's going on though. Tensky is going all the way around to B apps and he's making noise and throwing nades to try to pull rotation. And then he's going to try to split onto this site. It's yeah. actually so interesting. The problem is there's, no, there's going to be no bomb plant. So Envy will say by now, probably by now, the bomb should have gone down and it hasn't gone down. And they're playing super passively in CT spawn, just aware that they're not sure where the T's might be, where they might go. So they're allowing them to plant the bomb on A and they're just going to play for the retake afterwards. But if that's the case, there's no reason for Happy to hunt by himself and walk around the B bomb site, basically. So still, Dignitas has a good after plant position here. Well, MDK making a lot of noise and config. Had a nice headshot spot there, but he can't really go for the re-peak. That is a nice, chunky nade. They are a man down, though, Dignitas. You can see the plant is good 
for connector, but they've got cover there. So Tenski will have to be very careful indeed. Oh, he's gonna get dinked immediately. You know where he is. Config with a two-man spray down, that will change everything. Almost finding the third. The Glock comes in to finish things off there. Nice hold by Dignitas, starting to catch up now. Yeah, I mean, that was a great play from them, you know, with the two players that were left, very calm, and they immediately made the call with what play to go for. And as Yanko pointed out, it's really cool from Envious to see them playing basically like the safest setup where they can't get tricked, really. They're always going to play sort of a retake setup, but they have a fast rotation. Um, but that was a problem. I think they played it too passive, in my opinion. I would have uh, MBK with a jumping scout just be uh, behind those pipes we saw on the CT spawn across the ticket box and just spot for information because they, be they allowed the plant and allowed Dignitas to get into perfect positions basically wherever they want. And then that's a problem for, for Envy, even with the numbers. We've got the French pushing now, and the French have been stopped. It's Antico, it's going well for Dignitas at the moment. So we're looking at 13 to 12, and, and I do think that we have to favour Dignitas in this situation. If they can keep executing, I mean, they have the, their, their default with the mid and connector take is so strong. I think Envy are going to have a lot of difficulty. Putting a, putting a stop to it. I mean, Apex has been playing really, really well over towards the A site, but he's going to have to do even more if Envy are to take this to a third map. Absolutely. We have Kenny S on mid with a, an M4 instead of an AWP. Never an ideal situation for the French side. And it's going to be interesting to see if... Oh, actually, we've seen this round before from Dignitas. So we'll, have, we'll get the smoke here onto Jungle. Oh, sorry, the outside of the connector, perhaps. And yep. go for the split into the site. Um, so, pretty, pretty cool if they actually go for the exact same round. It was pretty successful previously. I think Ruminos walks in. But they can go for B line. as well. You can see the bomb is on short because it, it blocks off the, uh, the crossfire from A. And it seems that the B split is possible here or maybe they'll try and go into ladder room. So, they, they can go to A or B with the setup because they've got a lurker onto both sides. Yeah, this is beautiful. Same round, but in, it's like a decision. The decision tree goes down to the B split. That's awesome that they have so many ways to play this. That's good. But they can still go to A through CPL as well. There's, uh, or even go into C, I mean, they, they can do whatever they want, basically. And it's really cool because they take position, then they slow it down. So if there is a reaction from one side, as you say, and let's say they get a pick towards A, then they can definitely go A. Or if they get a pick towards a guy playing information towards B, then there, there's an opening there. So lots to be done, but it's good that Envy is a patient right now. And they are gonna go for the A play after all. And we're going to see Kenny has getting an easy fragment of MSL. No, I don't know if there was a flash in there. I don't think there was with MSL, but here we go. We've got Dignitas going in for the assault. And so far, it's good three kills, a trio of frags in a row. Happy takes down the bomber, but still hard times. Although two players very low now for Dignitas. NBK's only got a scout, but that will severely restrict the places that the bomb can be planted. And two players have got less than 15 HP. So this scout is basically an AWP for the most part. We have uh, Tenski, who's going to be the key player here. He's the man with the health. And you can see NBK's just going to jump around, run distraction, while his teammate tries to get some work done. But Happy's on short. And Happy's the one with the kit as well. So uh, things looking difficult here. And it seems that the harassment will come to a close as the players move away. Tenski in a good position to kill NBK, leaving Happy on his lonesome now. And he has no answer for Tenski either. So the score will be tied up. It's interesting there because I guess they were hoping that MBK would get a frag with the scout and if on the site and if he doesn't then they just save I suppose because it kind of felt like they should have wanted to go for it but obviously they don't know how weak the three players are which is another big deal so problem was they gave up map control yet again mid control and they didn't react to it anywhere didn't even go for a gamble maybe towards one of the bomb sites and what you guys were talking about it's an example of you having a default you get map control and then most teams just have different exits so to speak right you can go towards the a bomb site towards the b bomb site you can uh, fake something as well that's where you have the game plan coming into play right depending on what you did previous in uh, previously in the half you can bait out a reaction from uh, your opponents and then go for a play that would counter that uh, exact reaction here they just decided to walk up connector basically with, with a guy uh, in ramp and MSL in uh, window room and they just hit all of their shots basically coming in and you could see that without mid control the positions where the cities can play are, are limited obviously right so the T's know that coming into the bomb sites as well know maybe where to pre-aim we saw how powerful that can be uh, 
yesterday with uh, G2 and, and shocks get, uh, getting some crazy entry kills because he was pre-aiming the spots based on right, you know, right. clearing uh, different parts of the map beforehand. And then we are on an eco and Dignitas might get the lead, I think, for the first time in this game at 14-13. Well, let's not, let's not count our chickens before they've hatched. It is CSGO. Well, you can count them if you're you know, willing to make an omelette if they don't hatch. I'm definitely up for an omelet right now. Minsk style? No, please no. <laughs> Alright then, let's see what Envy can do with what little they have. Most of it uh, saved from the previous round in that scout. I know it wasn't saved, was it? It was taken down, so NBK has invested in the scoots. Dignitas biding their time. They have uh, people slowly creeping into the connector area, but uh, KGB is still going to get taken down by Devil. There is an answer though from MSL, but the trades are real, and that, that might be a problem here. We've got a smoke coming onto the bomb, but do they have one onto connector? Because there's a player on short, and that might be a problem. They're backing off backwards, and NBK is going to get a bit of a tag there. What's happening? Down to 6 HP. He's still alive. Dad, maybe you can answer what's happening. Don't know. Great. So the bombs are moving up towards top mid now. There's a full rotation coming in from the CTs. They are trying to jump onto short. Happy will fail though and move his way up to top mid. And Kenny is getting all the sound cues he needs, but there's nobody, he's too far away to get close to him without running. And uh, there's no one on the, on the site to punish with that information, but NBK doesn't need to be on the site because he's got the scout. Down goes Tensky. The bomb gets planted, but now it's Rubino alone versus three. He's been pretty on point with the uh, frag so far. And he'll need to be if he is to take the lead for his team here. An unlikely round for Envy. Yanko, your hands are in the air. What is this, James? Why are they running from connector all the way down underpass and towards the B bomb site when they're basically inside the A bomb site? Have to point out Cajun in that round. When you're alone in A apps and your team is going for a wrap towards A with three people up connector, the most important thing is that you don't die from someone who is close up, right? You need to play it more passively to make sure that uh, you will be able to trade with the guys uh, playing from the bomb site. But if he, if he dies close up, then the player can get uh, his gun and it uh, gives another angle for the T's that they have to watch out for. So a tiny misplay there, maybe what caused the things to go back in the end. And now it looks like maybe things could be very, very bad here for Dignitas has losing two players immediately on the mid take. And I don't know how their economy is shaped up to be right now, but it can't be too amazing. It's, it's still, okay, it's still doable here. Even if they lose the round, they'll be able to buy. But Envious creeping onto that 15th round themselves. So overtime could be on the cards here potentially, but Envious with a lot of, a lot of uh, answer, just straight back into what Dignitas has been throwing at them. And they are just wrecking them right now. One by one, winning these battles. A bit of mid-aggression, not allowing Dimitas finally to do what they, they want to do. If they lose this map because of such a awful eco situation for Envy being won, then they are going to be very frustrated. Because this, at that point, 13-13, you have to feel like they should be winning the map most of the time. But here we are. It's not over just yet. They do have a, uh, a, a reasonable buy, a good buy, I'd say. Cajun on the AWP. Indeed, they have opted for the AWP, so they've gone for a complete change in approach. In that sense, at least, there are still many people up top mid here, so I think we're still going to see the similar play. We've got the pop flash coming in, surely, from MSL. There it is, but Rubino is not going to go in. They're going to uh, change things just a little bit. Maybe there'll be a second one, though. They're all just going to creep in, it seems. There's the next pop flash and one from Devil as well. Trades, <laughs> pop flash. trades coming in. Yeah, I don't know what Devil's pop flash was there, uh, but we're down to a three versus three. I'll get back to that pop flash in a minute if we can. So the bomb is currently in mid around the connector area, but uh, all the nades are gone for the T's, which means they can't smoke off co uh, connector or short. They've got the crossfire and they are falling apart, just hazarding a guess at which way to look, and the map will go the way of Envy. It's actually really difficult to um, to get a good pop flash into Connector because there are if you play close left or close right where Devil was, then um, you're going to avoid a lot of the flashes there. But I have no idea what Devil was trying to do with his own flash. I'm surprised he didn't flash himself. Maybe he didn't have breakfast, James, and wasn't strong enough with the pop flash. Maybe he didn't have breakfast. Maybe he did, but it wasn't sausages. Like your breakfast. Exactly. 
All right, guys. Well, we have Cobblestone coming up as the, the next map. So we'll take a quick break before we go off to that one. And uh, hopefully we'll see Dintas rejuvenated with some talks. Hopefully not too, you know, too disappointed after that, that eco performance. I'm sure they'll bounce back. And uh, Envious, they are typically quite a decent Cobblestone team. They've been trying a lot of new stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to go. I think it's going to be close. Join us after the break.